welcome to the course in design of power electronic converters. We had started discussing RC snubber and uh, we did the derivations for uh, the three cases of over damped, under damped and critically damped and uh, then whatever results we had obtained using that uh, we had seen how to do RC snubber design with the perspective of limiting the spike voltage or limiting the dV by dt. Now, uh, let us see further on this RC snubber design. So, to refresh your memory again on this uh, that this is the base circuit and the basic waveforms using which we were uh, we had done the analysis and uh, we are doing the design. So, uh, this peak voltage E1 can be limited. Uh, by RC snubber design and this rate of change of this voltage dV by dt that also uh, we is one of the objectives of limiting it. So, then this parasitic LP is assumed to be known uh, you have an idea of it that is what we are assuming and this reverse recovery current is also something you will be having an idea and that is what is assumed for this RC snubber design. Now, this was the summary of the results that we had obtained and uh, we uh, used uh, these uh, to do the snubber design. And then now uh, we had used first this set of equations to obtain these plots okay, where we had this uh, uh, normalized peak voltage uh, versus your zeta with chi as a parameter and we saw that that we obtain a minima at certain points and then those are the points which were noted down to obtain this plot uh, which is your uh, uh, your all these zeta 0 versus chi 0 and even by E 0 versus chi 0 and this dv by dt 0 by E omega 0 these three plots were obtained and then uh, using it uh, uh, we saw how we can do the RC snubber design. And uh, similarly, uh, we obtain another set of uh, plots with uh, using this uh, set of functions for dV by dt. And similarly, uh, we saw that how we can uh, do RC snubber design for limiting dV by dt. Now, in most of the cases, we would like to do both. We would like to limit dV by dt and we would also like to limit the spike. So, how can we achieve both of them together? Now, if you observe uh, this uh, graph and uh, this graph, what you can see here is that that they are um, here your this is going to give your higher damping uh, ratio as compared to when you want to limit your uh, uh, dV by dt. So, they the zeta 0 that you obtain in the two cases for minimum even by E as compared to minimizing your dV by dt they are different. So, then uh, if you want to limit both of them we have to do compromise like kind of trying to reduce both somewhere in between the two where uh, both of them are reduced to some extent. Uh, to satisfactory extent we can say that uh, rather than trying to obtain the minimum of both. So, that is called as the compromise design. So, in the compromise design what uh, we do is that we, uh, we use this product, product of uh, this normalized ratio E1 by E and uh, your dV by dt average by E omega 0 that normalized dV by dt these two we multiply and based on it we do the compromise design. So, here uh, uh, what is done is that we multiply this. So, you can multiply these two functions and after that uh, the process is similar to do the plotting. Uh, you take chi as a parameter and you vary zeta and then uh, you uh, obtain the values by substituting those zeta and corresponding chi in uh, your uh, these uh, different different functions and then whatever values you are going to obtain you do the plotting and then there also at a certain point at a certain point of uh, zeta 0 you will be obtaining the minimum. So, you note down those corresponding value of the product 
and uh, also note down the corresponding value of zeta 0 and chi 0 as uh, we did uh, the plots for uh, this curve and uh, this curve is similarly is the plotting done for this product also and the corresponding values of uh, zeta 0 and chi 0 where the product becomes minimum are noted down. And then once we have noted down those set of values, we substitute that in this in these expressions and we obtain the corresponding values of E 1 by E and dV by dt average uh, your by E omega 0 the normalized one. So, uh, that is noted down as the dv by dt average by e omega 0 and e 1 by e both you can denote it by this letter uh, 0 as we are doing at the minimum point. And uh, so, those set of values are then plotted. So, we get this nature of the plot where you have this um, similarly initial current factor chi 0 with respect to that we plot this zeta 0 and uh, we plot this E 1 by E 0 and we also plot this dv by dt 0 by E omega 0. So, uh, we using these set of plots which are obtained by uh, minimizing the product means uh, the we plotted the product curves the product of E 1 by E and dV by dt average by omega 0 and the points at which the minima occurred those are the points uh, your uh, corresponding zeta 0 and chi 0 were noted down and then that when plotted this is what we obtained. So, when we use uh, these values for our design, so that means we are kind of doing a compromise, we are trying to reduce both E 1 by E and the dV by dt. So, uh, how you will design? You choose E 1, so you calculate E 1 by E, whatever is the peak that you can allow that uh, based on it you obtain this normalized ratio and that you find out on the plot and further you find out the corresponding values of uh, dv by dt by e omega 0 and corresponding values of zeta 0 and chi 0. So, what we are telling is that let us say this is the point that uh, you obtained and uh, so corresponding values of uh, this dv by dt by E omega 0 you obtain and also corresponding values of chi 0. Here uh, the point where I have chosen these two are almost very close enough and the corresponding value of chi 0. Let us say you choose this point. So, here this is that uh, corresponding point and this is the corresponding point for zeta 0 and this is the corresponding value of chi 0. And once you have uh, noted down those values, then you calculate C s R s omega 0 and this dv by dt average. So, how you do it is that you use these two equations which we have already used for you when we did the design for E 1 by E and uh, then once you know C s then you can calculate omega 0 as well because L p is known to you and uh, then you multiply this uh, with your uh, this one dv by dt 0 by E omega 0. So, then you obtain this dv by dt average. Now, using this method of compromise design, uh, what may happen is that you may uh, get in the very first attempt you may get satisfactory dv by dt, whatever dv by dt that you may be getting that is uh, good enough uh, for your device. But it may also happen that it may not be sufficient enough, it, it may be exceeding your dv by dt limit for the device. Then uh, what you can do is that for that uh, further uh, what is done is this uh, dv by dt expression which we had uh, written in terms of E omega 0. So, if you note down here this these expressions we had written is uh, in terms of omega 0 E. And if you recall the derivation at that time I had shown you that this omega 0 E can uh, be replaced as uh, um, your uh, this multiplied by chi and uh, uh, another ratio which is in terms of your IRR CS. So, that is what is uh, done 
this one is that part your E square by L P I R R in chi. So, that was written as just omega 0 E in uh, previously when we did the plotting for normalized plot. We normalized uh, this uh, dv by dt average with your uh, by dividing it by E omega 0. Now, uh, we normalize it by uh, doing this dv by dt average divided by E square by L p i r r. Dividing by that we do the normalize east and what is happening here is that uh, you may be wondering that what is the difference between the two. The difference here is in terms of uh, this part chi. Okay, this chi actually contains a C s inside it. If you remember it, it has that uh, part C s in, 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 in it, it is the ratio of your initial inductor energy by your um, final capacitor energy. So, half uh, L p i r r square by half uh, C s e square, this is uh, uh, square root of it is what is your chi. So, it has this part C s in it and so uh, it affects the choice of the capacitor uh, when you use involve that in your ex, uh, expression of dv by dt average. So, one part of C s was removed when uh, we were normalizing it with respect to E omega 0 uh, whereas, when we are including it this chi in that uh, mm, and, and remove it from the normalization, then uh, that is further going to uh, impact the choice of uh, C s. So, uh, with these functions uh, with a different type of uh, normalization, you um, obtain this curve which is uh, which is noted down here as the compromise curve. This compromise curve and this is that dv by dt 0 e square by l i that is what is written here. So, that is what we can plot and then with that uh, we use basically this uh, this graph that I uh, this is the same graph that I had shown in the last slide um, and this is plotted with respect to this uh, uh, chi 0 uh, and then you also this graph, uh, this is the same graph as is shown here. With these two set of graphs uh, we do the design. So, here what we do is first you decide what is your allowable dv by dt average for your device. Then you normalize it. So, basically you divide it by e square by L p i r r that means you multiply it with, with L p i r r by e square. And then what you do is you find out the corresponding value. So, let us say this is the value the, that you calculated and you calculate this corresponding value of chi 0 and uh, once you have done that you note down that uh, particular value over uh, here. So, let us say this is the value that you obtained for chi 0 and then corresponding to it you note down the value of uh, zeta 0 and note down the corresponding value of E 1 by E 0. And further uh, you know zeta 0, um, you also know chi 0. So, then you know using those two how you can calculate C s and R s, the required capacitance and uh, required uh, resistance for this number design. So, this is uh, what is called as the compromise design. You, you try to compromise between uh, you basically you try to achieve both. You try to limit both the spike as well as the dv by dt. Now, it sounds very good that we can uh, limit your uh, peak voltage that is the spike and we can also limit the dv by dt by using this number design. So, that is something very attractive. Uh, but uh, is there any cost that we are paying for limiting these and the cost is in terms of the snubber loss. So, um, what happens is that if uh, when we recall the circuit, 
So, this is your diode that we have taken here for design, summer design and this is your RC and this is your LP the parasitic inductance. So, your this whatever is the energy that is uh, here in this uh, LP, even if this number was not present, uh, this uh, would have got dissipated somewhere. Uh, so, that energy loss was uh, anyway happening, but further when uh, you added this number, you also have this uh, C s energy associated with it. And that of course, both of these two then as you, the way this number is uh, designed and this number operation takes place, it is basically your LPs and CS energy that is finally going to get dissipated in this RS, this, this uh, resistor because this is uh, the uh, lossy element, the resistor. So, this energy associated uh, with your snubber which is your half CAC square and half LPIRR square these two is what uh, is uh, is your snubber loss RS and uh, that could be written is uh, terms of 1 plus 1 by chi square if we want to rearrange it and write it in terms of chi the initial current factor. So, as I told you this was anyway happening if this even if this number was not present. But because of uh, this CS, this is this additional term that uh, came into picture. So, this is called as the additional loss factor 1 by chi 0 and this is the additional loss that is going to happen in the snubber resistor RS. So, that is plotted here with respect to this uh, uh, chi and uh, as chi increases we see that, that this is um, you are decreasing but this is the additional loss that is going to take place. So, your loss in the uh, converter is going to increase. So, uh, we do not want to uh, reduce the efficiency of the converter by putting too high values of RS. So, that is what uh, when you do the design you also have to see how much is the extra loss that is happening by your snubber design. If it is becoming too lossy then you can readjust the values and then again see how much additional losses are going to take place there. So, the key points of this lecture is that, that uh, we can do compromise design which try to limit both dv by dt and your uh, spike voltage. And uh, again the procedure is same, you basically obtain graphs, different plots and using those plots uh, you can do the uh, compromise design. And uh, we also have to be aware that there are additional losses uh, due to addition of the snubber and those losses uh, uh, we should be uh, looking into it that the losses are not too high to reduce the efficiency of the converter. So, we can redo the snubber design to adjust the losses. Thank you.